Hello there, my fellow Imperial Cartographers, and welcome to another lore video from the rich setting of Warhammer Fantasy. Today we shall return to another Imperial subtopic that I kept adding to in the past, but never actually got to finish it. The topic is the provinces, or regions, if you will, of the Empire. And for today's particular subject, it is gonna be a region known as the Ostermark. Do stay until the end as well, and you can vote on a future province too. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The officially named League of Ostermark is a major late-founding imperial province, lying at the most northeastern corner of the Empire of Man. Although it existed during the founding of the Empire too, the League itself was formed out of the chaos of the late 19th century, when the former capital of Mordheim was destroyed by a comet of gigantic size. The resulting destruction of the province's central government, and the death of its ruling family at that point, led the remaining towns and villages of the land to band together and form a new kind of semi-democratic government which would later become called the League of Ostermark. Ostermark is a land to the far east of the Empire, at the boundaries of Wild Kislev and the kingdoms of the dwarves in the World's Edge Mountains. It is a somber and bleak land of vast moors between the arms of the Great Forest. Snowfalls blanket the land in winter, while the spring thaw turns most of its roads into muddy quagmire. Even in summer, the sunlight seems to have some kind of weak, tentative quality to it. Geographically, Ostermark is divided into four main regions. In the north, there is the arm of the Great Forest, known locally as the Griffin's Wood which follows the line of the upper Talabek River and contains the province's new capital, Beshafan. In the south, along the banks of the river Stur, the expanse of the great forest close to Essen, when spoken of at all, is referred to as the Deadwood, because the ruins of Mordheim lie in its midst. Between these two arms, but south of the Brunwasser River, are the central moorlands, a vast expanse of low hills, fenlands, and shallow lakes. North of the Brunwasser, between the World's Edge Mountains and the end of Griffin's Wood, are large tracts of rolling grasslands. These are well suited to raising of horses, and they have been fought over by Ostermarkers and their Kislevite neighbors for a very long time. The Griffin's Wood around Beshafen has long been the center of Ostermark's political and economic life especially since the destruction of the old capital of Mordheim. The main exports of the region are lumber and river boats, the latter often built on the spot from some of the trees harvested that very season. The logs are floated down river as far as Fordenhof and Remmer to Beshafen, where skilled boat rides build craft which are considered among the best in the empire. Not as dangerous as other forested areas, the Griffin's Wood is home to many small villages and isolated homesteads, while ruins of older villages and even small towns lie deep within it. Since the war began, the eastern end of the Griffin's Wood below Fortenhof has become home to Kislevite refugees fleeing the devastation of their own land. Outlaws and river pirates have become a common occurrence, and the government of Beshafen is considering sending a task force to aid the Margrave Röntgen in restoring order. Ostermarkers mainly avoid the dead wood in the south. The traffic between Krugenheim in Talabekland and Essen or Karakadrin in the mountains beyond either travel along the Stur or take a roundabout route through the bleak moors. The dead wood has had a frightening reputation ever since Mordheim's destruction. No one lives there now, and very few enter it willingly. The locals swear that they can hear screaming coming from the woods at night, and anyone that enters it will come back mad or mutated, if they come back, period. Some people blame the anger of the gods, other the weird powers of the stone that fell from the sky on that legendary night. But whatever the reason, nothing natural lives there anymore. The bleak moors occupy the central portion of the province, 
including the friendly named Erie Downs to the south. Both these regions are thinly occupied, with the towns and villages clinging mostly to the rivers. Within the moors, sheep herding is common, although there are small herds of cattle as well. Isolated farms and cottages are scattered around the landscape. The Erie Downs is also a special case, because physically it is much like the Bleak Moors, but with a much more bizarre reputation. Close to the border of Sylvania, somewhere within the region, reputedly lies the location of a great battle against the vampire counts. During this battle, the vampires won, and total slaughter ensued. The legend also says that while the bodies were raised to serve in the armies of the counts, their souls were left behind, abandoned without the hope of the comfort of more. And to this very day, deep in the downs, those that enter may see floating lights, which are the souls of those who died there. They try to trick the travelers and lead them to their deaths, so they can steal their bodies and live again. The spirits of those whose bodies are stolen this way then join the lost souls of the eerie downs. The grasslands of the northeast are known as the Veldt, great rolling plains between the Griffin's Wood and the World's Edge Mountains. It is here that Ostermarkers raise herds of horses, the owners of each distinguished by their own brand. Ostermarker horses are famous for their size and power, and buyers come from all over the empire and beyond to the markets of Heffingen to add them to their stables. The region of Ostermark has long been an avenue for conquest, whether by invaders attacking the empire from without, or imperial armies marching to Kislev. Originally settled by a minor tribe of the Ostagoths people, it was the orcs, the goblins, and the trolls that frequently raided Ostermark in the days before Sigmar founded the empire. Stout defenders of their home and fortified villages, the Ostagoths learned to value cooperation between the clans, realizing that they were stronger together than apart. This made them very open to Sigmar's call for unity, and the Ostagoths also contributed a mighty force of axemen to the army that fought at Blackfire Pass. With that battle over, their leader of the time, Adelhard, accepted the title of Elector Count with a laugh remarking to Sigmar that theirs was the victory, air tags foreseen in the stars. On their march home, Adelhard and his men would take wives and mistresses from among the people of Averland, Stirland, and Talabekland upon their march home. These women were the first of many new bloodlines to come into the region, now called Ostermark, or the Eastern March, for its presence on the frontier. To this mix were also added Ungol elements during the invasions of the mid-18th century, also bringing a horse-raising culture to Ostermark's Velt region. The Kislevites also would cross the border, although more as settlers than conquerors, fleeing the cruelties of their own land or natural disasters like famine or drought. And it was all these elements that blended to form a people that, while still recognizably imperial, showed a lot of distinct differences from their more western cousins. As a people, Ostermarkers tend to be stout and thick-set, and their eyes often reveal an eastern heritage brought on by the Ungols a long time ago. Their men are given to wearing long, thick mustaches rather than beards, and a high-peaked fur hat rather than the floppy headgear found elsewhere in the empire. Women wear their hair loose, if single, or in a long braid wound up at the back of the head if married. Because of the cold weather, Ostermarkers also tend to wear multiple layers of clothing, in a style that seems rather old-fashioned in the other parts of the empire. When at their best, Ostermarkers are vibrant souls, with a love of life, horses, vodka, and dancing. Their women in particular are known for their quick temper and passionate nature, and more than one Reichlander dandy has been dumped semi-naked on the veld after attempting to seduce a maid of Ostermark. Few Empire folk naturally think on this side of the Ostermark nature, however. Many claim that the Ostermarkers are half Kislevite, half peasant, and entirely morose. They are famous for their long drinking binges, elaborate funerals, and combinations of the two. Many people fearing to ask an Ostermarker how their day had been for fear of a depressing and endless monologue. 
When at their worst, Oster markers show an almost theatrical obsession with death and its trappings. Their women seldom remarry once widowed. In fact, there is a running joke that Ostermark men would even return from the realm of Moor itself if their wife found another man. The fear of hauntings makes exorcist and priest of Moor very welcome throughout Ostermark, while carpenters are very much in demand to carve elaborate coffins, which are very common in the province. To an Ostermarker, this tradition of flamboyant despair is only natural. Coming from a province that is regularly raided, destroyed, or plundered, it is unsurprising to understand that death is a very common part of life for them. Situated on the south bank of the Upper Talabek, Bershafen is a compact city, crowded behind its high defensive walls. Its buildings are narrow and tall, and lean at dizzying angles over alleys which are more likened to darkened tunnels. Built from the dark wood of the Great Forest, Beshafen's structures have a gloomy look about them that no amount of whitewash and color trim can ever dispel. Beshafen, if you didn't figure out already, is the capital of Ostermark, and has been ever since the destruction of Mordheim. The princes of Beshafen, the so-called Hertwig family, have traditionally held the Chancellor's post ever since, in recognition of their service in the aftermath of the disaster. Although this position is hereditary, it has to be confirmed unanimously by vote of the other council members. By decree of the Emperor himself, the Chancellor is also named Elector Count of Ostermark. As mentioned before, Beshafen is famous for its boatyards, where some of the finest river craft in the Empire are built. There's also two water-powered sawmills there, a gift from the dwarves of Karak Kadren. These then turn the logs brought down river into more easily transported planks. Unfortunately, they are also the favorite places for Beshafen's criminal gangs to dispose of people who have crossed them. So, for today's poll, we have some provincial choices. I'm not exactly certain when I'll get back on this topic, but do feel free to vote and when the time comes I will respect it. Option A is Middenland, Option B is Stirland, and Option C is Talabekland. To vote, only write down your choice in the comments below. Thank you for participating. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the unique province of Ostermark from the Empire for today. While they might not have the rich fields of Averland or the castles of Reichland, I still think this is an interesting region with some very hardy people that survived despite some very unfavorable geographical odds. What are your thoughts on the region of Ostermark and its inhabitants? Is it among your favorite provinces of the Empire? If so, what do you like or dislike most about it? Do feel free to share any thoughts, opinions or questions on them in the comments below. If you found the video informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end and I wish you all a great, peaceful and healthy day. May Sigmar's blessings be upon you.